Sit back while I tell you a tale of a man who traveled many miles to have the opportunity to meet a teacher, a teacher of some infamy and realize some of his own dreams. And that is the way I am opening my recount of my journey to PAX Australia. And my main reason for going to PAX Australia was to meet the one Jesse Cox. And in fact, that did happen. But uh, I'm getting ahead of myself because I am trying to put on video record. Oops, bump the microphone. Slap, bad ray. Keep moving on. Uh, where was I? Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, this video is for me to sort out my memories and put them in chronological order. Hopefully, anyway. <laughs> right, and also uh, integrate some of the uh, video footage that I've taken and photo foot footage that I've taken throughout my weekend, leading going from my home here in Adelaide, traveling to PAX, spending time at in Melbourne, doing crazy things at PAX, and coming home once again. So, uh, to pretty much start off with, I have a short video after I had uh, dropped my daughters off at the bus stop for them to uh, go to school and university. And without further ado, here it is. Well, here it begins. The seven to eight hour drive to Ballarat, where I'm going to be staying, which is an hour out of Melbourne, to go to PAX Australia, mainly to meet one Jesse Cox. And it's an ex exciting day because this is going to be the first trip in my 44 years on this planet that I'm going on my own. My first holiday solely without myself or without my family whether it be my immediate family my wife and my kids or my parents this is my first ever outing on my own to another city and it's going to be glorious watch out melbourne here i come so after eight hours of driving I finally get to my hotel in Ballarat, which is a, a little, it's a, it's a country town, about 120 kilometers outside of the uh, Melbourne CBD. It was a very, very nice uh, hotel. Uh, just uh, throw some pictures out there. And it was a very, it wasn't actually really cramped as such. It was just like a one bedroom apartment thing. It was fairly cheap that I could uh, get at the, at the time and considering it was only myself and I was only going to be staying, well, basically sleeping there and going back to Melbourne and doing stuff and coming back and sleeping, it didn't need to be much. So that was pretty much that settled in for the night. And then there was a tweet from Jesse saying that, uh, I'm just going to look over here at his Twitter feed because this is, again, helping me keep things in some sort of chronological order, that uh, he was going to be at a, um, a German beer house, a bar, at 9.30 at night. This uh, happened when I had just got to the hotel. And I thought about it, I was like, yeah, I could, I could catch the train into Melbourne. This is about 4.30 at night, uh, in the afternoon. And I thought to myself, yeah, I could. It's possible. The train ride into Melbourne is about an hour-ish. But uh, once I'd actually got to the train station and sorted out my uh, train fares for the weekend, I thought, I I've, I've been on the road for eight hours. I, I need some time just to get everything sorted and drive around Ballarat and get myself uh, familiar with, with where I was going, how I was getting there. And 
I just need some downtime. So uh, I sent, I sent, I tweeted my apologies, even though I, I don't know. It might, it might have been seen, might have not been. Uh, who knows? But uh, I, that was pretty much the end of Thursday. I pulled out my PlayStation, which was actually it's it's odd having a console which is about the size of a laptop you can stick in a suitcase take it wherever and just pull it out plug it into a tv it's i haven't actually been i haven't done that in ever so it was quite cool i sat back and played persona 5 until i fell asleep so that brings us to friday morning waking up very early because I didn't need an alarm clock. The sun came out. That was it. I was awake. And then the curtains of the uh, hotel room, they didn't close very well. So, so they let sunlight in anyway. So I got went to my car and recorded this video. Well, here we are. Man, I can't not look at the camera for the, for the life of me, but I'm going to try. Okay, so... We're here in Ballarat, just about uh, ready to take the uh, train going into Melbourne for PAX Oz. So uh, it's going to be fun. So I think it's about an hour train drive, train ride to uh, Melbourne itself. So uh, I'll be taking some footage on the way there, probably just take some pictures while I'm in PAX and uh, see where things lead from there. All right, Ray out. And so after that, Parked the car at the train station. I'll just drop some of the pictures of the actual uh, train station itself in, in amongst this. It um, it was a very it's, Ballarat is very historical. It's got a lot of historical buildings, and the train station is no exception. Uh, I found that uh, they they have preserved quite a fair bit a bit of the uh, of the old natural history of the of the the train station itself, and. Actually, that's one one thing I like about Ballarat in itself. It's a, a it's a, yeah, blah, 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 blah. it's an old historical uh, mining town where the when the gold rush happened, and there is a good many um, like historical villages who do reenactments and that sort of thing for for the tourists and probably for the history buffs too. Um, I'm not sure if Jesse would have been. I reckon Jesse would have liked seeing Sovereign Hill. I don't know if he would, did actually get around to seeing that. Um, if he didn't, maybe next year, next time. But uh, that is definitely a place to see. So, getting in the train and traveling to Melbourne, it, it was quite a foggy and chilly morning. I had my really heavy coat on, which I ended up not needing. Traveling along the train and just looking at the window at the countryside. The, the train system for um, Victoria is quite, uh, I wouldn't say amazing, but it's very well built. Especially like between a country town to Melbourne City. I was able to catch the train right into the city CBD and that was a heaven heaven sent so after getting to the uh, train station in Melbourne I departed the plane the uh, train station train station from Melbourne from a completely wrong exit and just, and I had uh, honestly if it wasn't for Google Maps and navigation I would have been com a completely lost and b uh, wandering around Melbourne, not knowing where the hell I was supposed to be going. But uh, wandering around the back streets for for a little while, I finally ma managed to make my way to the Melbourne Convention Centre, where, as you can see, this picture you can see, where I did in fact make it to PAX, and I, I think it was a good hour or so before PAX actually opened up so I was just wandering around following crowds that sort of thing just taking in the atmosphere 
and I decided, oh, hell, why not? Let's join the queue for when PAX officially opened. And that was fun fun as well. Getting in with the... I'm, I'm a country boy to start off with. I usually don't deal very well with a lot of people and especially a lot of noise. Hence why I don't go to bars like that often. Um, but the the queues themselves weren't really that compact and everybody was actually being really, really fairly well behaved. It was... The, the noise level in the queue wasn't raucous. So I was able to keep a de- decent level head going through through all that. It was definitely like a, it was ple- it was pleasant enough, and uh, like just standing there and waiting. They've had a few uh, uh, beach balls bouncing around the pl- in 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 the queue. Um, they had a few uh, like hanging hoops for where you could actually win a subscription to Xbox Play. I think it's a, some subscription model which. I don't have an Xbox, so I didn't really participate that much. But it was it was fun to see. It was fun to be a part of that. Just hanging around. Just I think it was the start of my queuing experience. It, it taught me about queuing. I didn't get like to the front of the queue on that one, but I was pretty damn close to uh, uh, being about the first fifth of the people that walked through the actual pack, the uh, convention hall itself. So, wandering through the convention hall, they, they had a lot of displays with, like, hardware manufacturers, um, AMD, Intel, uh, cooling things. I, I actually did wander around uh, uh, the, these displays, and I thought, I'm not really that interested. I mean, yeah, sure, it looks flashy, and sure, it looks kind of interesting but and they had like VR uh, things on display too it's like uh, the, the the one and only time I've tried VR uh, it left me with a really bad taste in my mouth and it's like meh don't really need it um, also I had a look at the, like some of the other monitors it, curved monitors seem to be all the rage and I was, I was looking at them it's like mm, yeah that's nice doesn't it's not something I need, not something I want. So I passed that over too. Had a bit of a wander around the uh, the indie booths again. There was only really one game there that uh, actually really actually two games. I tell a lie. There was two. I did uh, wander past the uh, Hand of Fate to um, display there and picked up a game key for Hand of Fate two. Uh, well, they also gave me a, a game key for Hand of Fate 1, which I already do own. So if anybody's interested in a game key for Hand of Fate 1, hit me up in the description. Uh, we'll, we'll sort something out. And uh, there was another, uh, it was a game in development called Feathers. And pretty much the only thing you really did... In that particular game, it was more like a relaxation game, very similar to Journey and Absu. You just it was, they didn't actually have much gameplay, but the soundscapes and the actual just moving through the world was very relaxing. And I would love to see that game come to come to fruition. So that was the only the only two things I can find, really find memorable from the actual indie set as part of the the PAX main hall. The uh, other thing I could pro- I, I can remember uh, checking out, also there's a, a picture coming up for that one too, was the uh, classic console area where they actually had an old Commodore 64. Or, uh, actually, it, it wasn't even the Commodore 64 that I had personally owned. But it must have been a, a bit of a later model. But it had International Karate on it. A game that I used to play way too much as a teenager. So I sat down there with the one button joystick and just... I, it was amazing that I could actually even rec- re- recollect what would the uh, the joystick commands for the actual karate game were. And how, what, how bad the hitboxes were. It was, uh, yeah, quite a lot of fun. 
just uh, like reminiscing and actually just taking a step back in time and actually using the, the these things it was uh, definitely something that oh, again it was something that was unexpected and glad i experienced so um from here where to move on to well um i think i'm going to need my pax booklet where are you Ah, it's up that way. Be right back. Alrighty. So, this is going to be long-winded, I know, but uh, I am not a professional. I never claim to be. So, Friday. There wasn't actually very many panels on Friday that I really did want to check into because I, a, I was pretty much there just for Jesse, and uh, Jesse's panel didn't actually start until five o'clock in the evening. But uh, I did actually check out a, a panel. I think it was in the Wombat Theatre. I think, yeah, one of the first panels there. Uh, online down under. Uh, two, Turning to streaming for a full-time job on, on yeah, job on on Australia. How about in Australia? I think that was a typo. And that was at about eleven o'clock. So I, I attended that. Um, it wasn't really much. I didn't know. Um, mainly stay passionate. Something may happen. Find your niche. Blah blah blah. That sort of thing. Um, if you haven't been uh, in producing videos for. I suppose as long as I have, you don't really, you should have figured that out by now. And if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. And if you enjoy what you're doing, who cares? If you happen to it actually turn it into a job, great. But uh, keep your expectations realistic. That's my take on that. And then. Wandering around, uh, finding some places to eat. That was the other thing that I found quite difficult on the first day, on, on the Friday, was getting my uh, bearings on what was actually in Melbourne. I could actually go, like, get food, drinks, that sort of thing. Um, yeah, it was definitely something else. And then came Acquisitions Incorporated. Now, I had no idea what the panel was. Later, while I was standing in the queue, and I, I realized quite quickly, if I wanted to get anywhere close to the front row, you started queuing at least two hours before the panel started. At least. If you wanted to be at the front, two hours was the window. So there was a quite, quite a many, many panels. I actually stood for two hours and, and waited. Uh, so... For the Acquisitions Inc., starting at 5 p.m., I started queuing at about 3 p.m. So there wasn't very much time left over from uh, the online Down Under um, panel, where while we were in said queue, I had a really good in, uh, discussion with a, a, la a lady and her family. Uh, she was wearing a gopher t-shirt and I said hey uh, that's a, a nice a gopher t-shirt and we actually struck up a conversation about uh, Fallout 4 and Skyrim and that's what we just just connected over over those two games and it was actually quite a, it was a great conversation killed some time while we were waiting and uh, it, I came to the realization as I was looking around and talking to this this uh, lady and uh, realizing that there was, her husband was there and her uh, her teenage son was there also looked pretty much around the same age as my kids and I was looking around and it the thing really hit me that I may be one of the I wouldn't say they were the first, I'm in a small group of what you would call graying gamers. I mean, back, uh, I suppose, in my parents' generation, the, you have the, the uh, grey nomads, people who are basically going grey and, and taking their camper vans and just travelling around the place. 
Um, I can see in the next 20 odd years or so, there's going to be a small, a fairly, I suppose, even getting larger section of gaming where we're going to be over 50, over 60, and there's going to be a lot more white hair at these sort of conventions because we're there, we're representing. And the uh, the next generation of young adults, while they did may, uh, make up a good 60%, I would dare say, of the uh, PAX goers, there was definitely a good uh, number of us old, old fogies there and just geeking out at things that uh, we, we had seen and what we were going to see. And I found out this uh, Acquisitions Inc. panel was an, a, a role-play panel. I was like, okay, that's cool. I, had, I And apparently this, again, this Acquisition Inc. panel was quite popular. Um, I thought maybe there was a good number of people there just to see Jesse, but there was also a good many people there just to see this, uh, this role-play show, which I'm going to have to do some more digging around and find out a little bit more about. Because um, apparently this this group, roleplay group, panel, whatever, has been going for quite some time and has quite a bit of uh, popularity of its own. Which I was... It was, it was amazing. And to add to another, another little tale to add to the whole waiting to see this uh, roleplay show... I was sitting in the audience. There was uh, uh, pretty much a guy next. Well, I was sitting on the end of a row. There was a guy next to me, either side. Uh, I think there was a, a guy to my right who was very well spoken, and um, he, I think, from recollection, he was working in the government in the medical area. And there's a guy on my left who had come from, come from California, and a few people in the row in front of us, and we started like talking, like comparing what uh, what the the convention was like. Um, we also started like comparing states. The guy to my guy to my right, I believe he was from Sydney. I was from Adelaide, so so you had New South Wales, South Australia, and there were a couple of Victorians up the front, and we just started talking, comparing states, and the guy from California was actually getting this sort of, uh, I suppose, uh, edu- state education of uh, what what things were like and how different th- like different states are, and that just that conversation itself, wow, killed time. It was amazing to be at, and. Again, that was another thing that uh, being at these conventions... This is going to be one hell of a long video. Props to you if you've actually uh, like uh, stuck through this far. But I've got many tales to tell. Um, yeah, this just, just uh, the uh, discussion. I wish... I kind of wish I, the, if, if I had recorded it somehow, but it's just going to have to live up here in my head for for an ever and a day but that was also a great thing it turned out the the role play itself um don't know if you'll be able to actually see it anywhere on the internet i i don't even know if it was recorded anywhere and rebroadcast anywhere if so if you do, if you know uh maybe leave something down in the description for me because i would i would really like to actually just go back and uh, try and like fill fill myself in on the history of it because it it was popular as hell i had no idea i was just there for jesse the role play itself like any 4 hour role play was amazing it was a it was the the dm um again not a person i really knew there was a couple the a couple of the other role players there on, on the quote unquote panel um, I had actually there was there was one guy that I had kind of watched. He was a a, a participant on a couple one shots in It Me JP's uh, uh, live streams, 
So I kind of knew him. There was another guy who I had never, never like seen, but he was a, definitely a talented role player in such. There was Jesse, and there was uh, Commander Holly as well, which I didn't really know was going to PAX. Um, not, I'm not really a fan of uh, her work, but I had enjoyed her uh, time spent doing the wrestling one shot for Emmy JP and I'm I suppose I respected that and actually listening listening to her, her talk uh, do 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 the role play and uh, I was interested to hear what she was uh, had to say later on so and uh, she did actually appear in other panels which I'll probably uh, go over uh, pretty soon so after the Acquisitions Inc. panel finished at 8, 8.30, I wandered around Melbourne's nightlife for, I don't know, if it, it, was, it was definitely up until about uh, 9.30, 10 o'clock, I would say, for a couple hours, found, found somewhere to eat, had dinner, uh, found, actually... Let, let's rewind that just, just a little bit. After the panel, I went out and uh, hit up a bar very close to the convention center. Bought a cider which cost me way too much money. It was uh, like a one standard drink cider and it cost me something like 14 bucks. And it's like, oh. And um, it was one of those ciders that you could just drink and drink very very quickly by the time the bartender actually got back to me with my change i'd finished the drink took my change and left because all i just wanted was a drink i wasn't actually there for the atmosphere um again a country boy i don't like cra noisy crowds that much it does does something to my head so i'd left and wandered down the uh the the Esplanade, Espl Esplanade, yeah, Esplanade of the Yarra, down in front of the uh, Crown Casino. And there was like many like cafes, uh, like up up t up town type cafes. That, like a lot of people were milling about, and found actually, oh, I actually found this other. Uh, there's a Bavar there was a Bavarian beer bar that I found, which is a little bit off off of the Esplanade. I found. And they had a, a really nice drink, which I took a picture of the, of the label of the bottle, because I am definitely going to have to track down <laughs> and source some supply of this this uh, particular brew. It was very very nice. It was not quite a stout, but it was like a very dark ale, and it was very nice. And uh, moving on from that, I th found somewhere to eat. Uh, I think it was TGIF. Uh, which is thank God it's Friday. It was a kind of a, like a, a bit of a a, ch a chain uh, restaurant. The food wasn't amazing. The food was okay, but I wouldn't say it was amazing. But after that, it uh, ended up around about uh, eleven o'clock ish. Um, I hadn't heard it. Uh, there wasn't any other tweet of like Jesse possibly hitting up another bar at any stage. So. Uh, I decided to mosey on back to the uh, train station, got got the train at about uh, 11.30 and almost fell asleep on the train train ride home and pretty much got back to the hotel at, uh, I think it was about half past midnight-ish, fell asleep and that was the end of Friday. So, waking up to the sun streaming through the blinds at 6 o'clock, Saturday, there was no going back to sleep. And, and I'm pretty sure, if I look at the uh, uh, schedule for Saturday, I had something. Uh, let me, uh, sorry, I need to go back a page. There we go. Let's go back to, let's go to Saturday, shall we? What was on Saturday? 
just scrolling back through the feeds. Uh, yep, here we go. Saturday, Saturday, Saturday. So, Saturday, what did I do on Saturday? The first, uh, first panel I had was trying to find it now. Ah, that's right. The first panel that I went to was actually fairly, fairly late in the day. Started at one o'clock. I know, I I recollect actually, I got the eight, eight the eight o'clock train got me into Melbourne at about half past nine. Wandered around the convention a little bit, and started queuing for the great debate, another a panel that uh, Jesse was on. Uh, watching people play games is more fun than playing them, and it was the debate itself was actually. It was, it was interesting. It was more uh, comedy than anything else, but Jesse did his damnedest to try and actually have a f solid argument for the reason why why it is good for people to be watching games. And he... I think he kind of missed, missed, the, uh, missed the memo about what the panel was all about. He, I think he might have lined up a few more jokes instead, but he had a really solid argument, which I did agree with quite a fair bit. And that the 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 debate itself was great great to be at. Actually, and, and thinking about this time, I had the realization that I was just in one. It was almost like I was there for a a long ass concert, which I was just queuing to just go see the same performer time and time again. And yeah, so after that panel had finished, I I was starting to get a little hungry because it was two o'clock in the afternoon. And I started to wander off to find food. And at about 15 minutes after I'd actually started to go find food, I get a tweet from Jesse Cox. Now, if I just scroll back through his Twitter feed and f find it, yeah, here we are. Uh, it doesn't actually t tell me the time, time of it, but uh, it was very, very soon after the panel had finished that he'd said, Important update, I'll be on the Jack's box, bo Jackbox party panel in less than 45 minutes. And it's like, oh, shit. So I had tweeted back. More Jesse? Okay, food, food can wait. So I went, I went, to, went to the Jackbox panel, uh, feeling a little hungry, but uh, still. An extra panel of Jesse? Sacrifices had to be made. The uh, the Jackbox Jackbox panel. If you haven't actually played a Jack Jackbox game, it's a really really good party game. If you uh, like uh, have like a decent sized TV, have your friends over with their mobile phones, it's it's a really great ga game to uh, have that sort of thing. And uh, they tried having the convention hall, and not the convention hall, the the theater that all these people were in, trying to connect to their servers. Why, with their phones trying to play the game. I, I think we DDoS them more than once. They they really did need to actually uh, like have maybe just groups of people logging into their servers and then playing their games because there were a good like uh, a good half of the panel was um, met with a lot of people they were they were trying to get into the the audience with their with their phones of the actual, the, the gaming panel itself. And we couldn't do it because we were DDoSing the crap out of them. Uh, but there was one game that they did play, which there was a thousand odd people within the the audience voting. And that was in itself, I pretty I reckon it blew the, the uh, Jackbox uh, um, developer's minds that we were actually all able to get in and we were voting and it was a great old time. And there was a lot of laughs had. And that was the one thing I could say about the the weekend. There was not a a cringy moment. I, I thoroughly enjoyed myself the whole weekend through. And then that left me a 
let me see, that ended at 4 p.m. So that left me like three and a half hours until the evening with Jesse Cox. And that was promised to be a bit of a wild time, and it indeed was. But then, after that, a little bit later, in between the uh, the panels themselves, I had had the hankering to get Euros. So I found a Euros place on the, uh, the, uh, the four shores. Again, Google Maps led me a little bit astray because the actual uh, the Euros place I was looking for was on a, on a, a mezzanine. So that was a little bit of fun finding it. But I found it nonetheless and had a de decent uh, Euros. Oh, they call them Suvlakis over there. Euros, Suvlakis, they're about the same, really. And uh, on the way back to the convention hall, Jesse uh, lets out another tweet saying, if you have any Aussie brews or snacks... For, for him to try and bring them to the panel. I was like, right. Challenge accepted. I am going to find a place that sells a South Australian beer because I couldn't find any uh, other places, any bars that would actually stock South Australian beer. Philistines. <laughs> um, to uh, give my um, idol, I suppose, so I Google mapped again, found a, a bottle shop, which was about, uh, about one and a half kilometers away, walking distance. So we uh, walked, down, walked down the street. I bought a couple of beers, had one for myself on the way back. And I had the uh, beer sitting in my bag and uh, I was just hoping it wouldn't get too warm by the time uh, Jesse had had it. And uh, started queuing up for the evening with Jesse Cox at, uh, I would dare say, I started queuing at five o'clock in the afternoon. The panel was there, it was going to start at like half past seven. I was amongst the first people to actually get into that uh, particular uh, hall for the evening. And I think word must have got out, got back to Jesse that was, people were starting to queue so early because he come out and he met us and a few of us me included took the opportunity to um to meet him and honestly um oh, oh man i'm getting goosebumps even thinking about it going up to meet him and shaking his hand and thanking him for everything he's done and I, I must admit, I did fan, fanboy a little bit, and I, I slipped it on that I had actually had driven like eight hours just to come see him and be at the PAX just for him. Uh, <laughs> I feel a little embarrassed now, but uh, when, you're so, when you're in that sort of, like that, that sort of situation, you do kind of lose control a little bit. And I, 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 admittedly, I was shaking. Uh, I had, uh, the night before, filled out uh, a postcard. One of these postcards. It's really hard to see with the lights. Oh, my God. Glaring. Yeah, one of these postcards. I filled out the back of them, the back of one, to give it to him to read because I knew there were things on my mind that I, want, I wanted to say to him, but I, I probably would have forgotten in the excitement so having that written out to give to him so he could read later i had i had that in my hand and i also had the a spare one for him to sign so i gave him gave him that uh, postcard and he, he read, read the first uh the first line of that and i was saying and i had said that i was a recovering um mmo addict and he, he says like if he mentioned the, on that and so I said yeah I'd played WoW just before up until before before uh, Wrath of the Lich King uh, came out and I had to quit because it's either um, playing MMOs or my marriage and my marriage was more important so I had to give that up and fill I uh, filled the void with let's playing and uh, he had. Uh, 
he, he, he took the card, signed it, and had, had, did, put a little message on the back of it saying, MMOs aren't a, an addiction, but they are the worst. Um, Jesse, if you ever watch this, I, I, would li- I, I disagree with you. I gave up smoking cigarettes. I was a hardcore smoker for about 10 years. And yeah, I, I, coming from my point of view, I, I think yes, yes they are. They can be. If you let them. Again, probably not as bad as nicotine. But they get under your skin just as badly. And the withdrawals that you can get from them. Yeah. It is slightly different, but it is a form of addiction. And I I suppose I'm qualified to actually, uh, just to say as much. But, yeah. So... And after that, I asked to take a selfie with him. And he, I, I think it was just something that uh, he was used to, that people wanted. He even had his own little pose <laughs> um, in the selfie itself. So, uh, there, and also, I, I'm not accustomed to taking selfies with my phone. And it was doing some weird stuff. And it ended up, I uh, t- took about three selfies. The first shot wasn't that brilliant. The third, sh- the sh- the third shot that we took, yeah, it was okay, but the shot in between the second selfie picture was something that is going to be immortal, if not immortalized, but it's going to be something that I'm going to have uh, printed at some stage and have on a picture frame somewhere in. I, I don't know, maybe hang it on the bat on the uh, <laughs> on the d- the room dividers I've have have here a- as as a reminder. But there is there is definitely a picture that I'm going to have for the rest of my life, just to remind me of that that moment. And uh, after that. I went back to the line, still shaking, and uh, I met. I pretty much messaged my wife with the picture, say, "I did it! I did it!" And uh, yeah, I, I, I was. I was still shaking. <laughs> yeah, it was just something that. It's one of the things that you th- you 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 desire th- for for things to happen like that, but. Um, you don't, you're okay if they don't happen, but it did, and it's still mind-blowing to have to have that sort of thing happen, so that was before the panel, we, a little bit later on, uh, PAX Australia had actually tweeted out it got to the stage with the the uh, queuing line. We actually had to become regimented to get more people into the actual queue itself. They had tiles on the floor. It was it, the uh, call came out one person standing per tile, and we were lined up in rows as as per this picture. And I'm gonna try and blow it up and try and circle where I am in the whole s- s- scheme of things. But uh, yeah, they they moved us into the hall. And apparently, it was the the most packed out the the wombat theatre had been all weekend. And uh, we got we got we we went it, it went into the uh, into the thing. And as Jesse came out, everybody started. There was a good many people rush, rushing the stage with gifts for him and. Uh, I was actually stuck in the middle of a row and I grabbed the beer that I had, tripped over many bags just to get to the stage at the same time as some other Victorian was trying to um, give him a Victoria Bitter, the Philistine. Victoria Bitter, if, if you don't know, isn't, it's an acquired taste and it's not the best beer in the world. I, I gave him a, a Cooper's um, sparkling ale, 
not sparkling, pale. It was a pale ale. And uh, so he'd taken both beers. And uh, there, were, there were, it was a little bit of a joking flight. It's like, no, don't drink that crap. Drink this. And uh, made up my way back to the seat. And uh, some people had... Uh, and it... I, I kind of feel honoured in the in the fact that uh, Jesse decided to crack my beer open first. Take that, Victorians. <laughs> oh dear, the rival the rivalry between Victoria and South Australia. Yeah, it's still going. It's still going strong. Ha ha! I win. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he cracked my beer open first, and I made sure that it was it was rolled. But it was wrong. It was, the sediment was mixed well before he even got to it. He cracked the beer open, had had a bit of a drink, and that was that was great. And then someone had, had delivered him fairy bread. Uh, most people that in Australia would know what fairy bread is. Fairy bread, for the people who don't know, is white bread uh, with a uh, with a, um, a smattering of butter, a smearing of butter. And then hundreds and thousands sprinkled onto the butter itself. This is a uh, a treat that we give we give our children at like birthday parties. It must be something of a a, a peculiarity to uh, Australia, but uh, he, he someone had actually gone to the trouble of making him two pieces of fairy bread, and we had to we the the whole theatre. Um, kind of peer pressured him to eating it, and he, he he was trying to get it over in his head what what it was and uh, why we'd actually come up with this sort of, and we'd give it to our children. So <laughs> after like many many uh, like cheers of eat it eat it eat it that we'd all uh, joined in to. Uh, Pressing you, he turned around. He said, he said, "Right." Turned around back to the table where he'd left my beer, picked up my the beer that I gave him, and he sculls it, knocked it back like a pro. And I'm thinking, "Wow, that's going to come back and haunt him in a bit." Little uh, did I know that uh, Jesse is quite an accomplished drinker, because um, if I if I had sculled it that that beer the way he had done i'm i'm not a huge drinker myself uh would pretty much knock me for a loop for about 20 minutes but credit to him and uh for someone to uh, skull a beer like that he must have kind of enjoyed it i i at that point in time i thought yeah if if you if you really hated the uh, the drink that you were given uh, you wouldn't have knocked it back that quick. He sculled it within a ten minutes, ten te- ten seconds or so, and I'm going, oh, I couldn't do that. <laughs> Man, that that felt me with that filled me with a little bit more of a pride too. Take that, Victorians. <laughs> uh, then then he f- f- uh, followed it up with the the uh, can of Fosters that someone gave him. And then he turned around and, and pointed at the Fosters. Now that's an American beer. <laughs> oh dear, but uh, yeah, I feel actually. Let's rewind just a little bit back to where I was taking the um, the selfie with him. As our final um, parting words, I I told him that I, I had a beer for him, and he looks looks go and he said thank you. So uh, I think that was also another. Um, there's one thing I realized, and I think it was about this point too, that as much as these meetups and these panels are memory making for the people that go see them, it's also uh, one hell of an experience for the people that are giving them. They must be memories that they 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 are making themselves it's a, a shared experience of making like 
these momentous uh, memories for each other. And uh, it was, it was, there was a good um, number of uh, revelations I've had over the weekend. And uh, yeah, that was one of them. And we had like an amazing time. The uh, the panel itself, Jesse planned to pull some people from the uh, the audience and have a uh, one of the retro um, Super Nintendos. And he did a challenge with these eight people, and they took they took they paired these eight people up into four teams, and those four teams were competing against each other with the the small controllers of the uh, Super Nintendo one person each half and that was one of the most it was fun it was great it was like a it was a competition that he'd put on he'd pull people from the the, the audience so the audience were entertaining him and the audience uh, it was that was just um it was amazing. It was amazing time all, all around. And once the, those two, those four teams had eliminated everybody, each each other. So you had like semi-finals and then the finals. So there was a team of two two girls who had bested everybody. And then he took and put a twist to it. He said, "Right now you are fighting each other, but." you're going to be blindfolded. So these two girls with a controller each had no idea what they were doing and the battle that they had in the game itself was Street Fighter 2. Apologies if I didn't um, mention that before. But the, the battle they had came down to the wire. It was the best of three and they went to three games. And the, la the, the last game, it was the, the whole... Um. Yeah, it was it was just like a little a little esports tournament with a, 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 like a, a a room full of people cheering these girls on. It was it's, and I reckon Jesse must have been as just as ended. He was just just as entertained as all of us, and that was the whole panel. He tur turned it on its head and had us entertaining e ourselves. And him and it was uh, it was a great great night great time so uh, after that panel had finished um i had actually no you know that time where i was talking about the euros it didn't happen back then it happened now after that this panel because I was da that damn hungry. The uh, the time where I mentioned that I had uh, sought out the Euros, I actually uh, went to some food court and got something else, some sort of um, Chinese rice dish with generic Chinese Asian type food, which was all right. You got me through to the panel at least. But it was at now after at the end of this panel, I had the hankering for Euros. Do you know why? Because I had the beer. So I found the Euros, consumed the Euros, and a little bit after that, found out that Jesse had tweeted out he was going to a esports bar, the same esports bar he mentioned in on Thursday's tweet, and I thought, oh, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll go along to that, and for the first time in. Uh, probably decades, I queued up to get into a bar, which was quite interesting. I, I had a, a interesting, interesting little chat with a couple of blokes from I don't know. I think they were from Victoria, from Melbourne, Melbourne itself. Um, obvious uh, geeks and nerds. Good judging by their t-shirts, uh, and who were also there just to see Jesse. Uh, because of Jesse's tweet. And uh, yeah, we queued up to get into this really small bar. And, and, and I must admit, the bar was probably 
slightly bigger than my hotel room only by a little bit and they had like screens showing um, CSGO's uh, live streams and also there was a Dota uh, stream there too. Uh, Jesse um, amended his tweet that he was actually going to go out to uh, Nando's and uh, get food first before coming to the bar, which is fair enough. <clears throat> so um, I had driven in to Melbourne that day. Um, I probably didn't mention that. Apologies for the jump cut, but uh, had to clear my clear my throat. Right, um, yeah, I had driven in that day, so I wasn't going to be drinking much more. And also, I was suffering from hay fever, so I was pretty much drugged up on any histamines, any anti uh, decongestants, and any uh, any other anti thing that a uh, hay fever sufferer would uh, go for. So, uh, like any good bar, they had orange juice, so I was quite happily uh, drinking that instead until uh, Jesse uh, came along. Um, I didn't actually get to speak with Jesse that much. Uh, just uh, he was sharing stories with uh, other people in a, in a group that had uh, gathered around him. I would uh, listened in on that for a while. But uh, as, as I said, being a country boy, um, the, the noise level of the bar itself got to the stage where I couldn't hear my own... My, you know, you, you get to a stage where you can't hear yourself think. I get to that sort of stage and say, right, no, I have to go. Also, it was getting to a point about midnight and I still had to drive back to Ballarat, which was at least an hour away, at least. And that's where that little um, adventure started because... Trying to get out of Melbourne was gridlock traffic because the uh, the entry to the um, the freeway that I wanted to get onto to get out of Melbourne was blocked off for some reason, and entries to the freeway along the freeway were blocked off for some reason. So I I ended up uh, being in two lots of gridlock traffic trying to get onto this freeway so I could leave to get to the bed that I was going to sleep for however long and then come back to <laughs> back to the the um to the actual convention itself via train i had booked two days worth of train tra tra travel and decided to drive in on the saturday um so it took me an hour to drive out of melbourne so getting out of melbourne probably about half past midnight maybe quarter to one o'clock in the morning driving to ballarat in country conditions where it, it was it's high, basically highway conditions with no street lights whatsoever. Um, so that was fun. Being a little bit tired and uh, driving back in that, that sort of condition. Got, I got back to the hotel at 2 o'clock in the morning. Pretty much dove straight into bed and slept until the sun peeked his head through the curtains again at seven o'clock in the morning. So I only managed to get five hours of sleep that night too. I looked at the uh, the train timetable and uh, and the uh, the PAX timetable itself, and also Jesse was at a ten thirty uh, panel on the last day of PAX, the Sunday, and for me to get get there in time i had to take the eight the eight o'clock train so it was a case of dunk my head un, under a tap get my hair in a reasonable uh, state and uh, drive driving through mcdonald's to get breakfast uh, eating that on the way to the train station just to be 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 sure to be on that actual train to get to the convention center on time so I could actually uh, check into or well, queue up for the next panel and that was uh, let me see let me go back to the panel page oh Sunday oh, that's right view from the top making names in games so Commander Holly was there at that particular panel as well 
So I, what she had actually had to say is also on that panel, I found very interesting. Jesse was there also. Um, again, discovering more about Jesse himself um, and realizing, and I was able to put myself more into his shoes. Um, he had uh, pretty much said that uh, he felt like in a bit of an imposter being where he is. And the sort of uh, fame slash fame like treatment that he he gets, he, and I I can I can sort of kind of see where he's coming from. As as a as a guy in that sort of well I'm I'm not in that position but I I could definitely see is like he's in a bit of a a wonderland himself. He's got he doesn't know how. He got there, doesn't know why. He's enjoying every minute of it. Um, but, uh, yeah. He did also, the, uh, again, the in that panel, there was a lot of advice given that I pretty much already knew. And I suppose even just validated a lot of things that I, I had felt about this whole content content creation and just doing this as something you love to do. If something comes of it, great. If nothing comes of it, you still have something that you have that you enjoy doing. And something may come of it. And if it does, great. If it doesn't, you have, again, you have something you enjoy doing. And that's exactly what I have. So at the end of that particular um, panel, that was the last panel that I, I really booked myself out for for the, the whole weekend, the last of Jesse's panels. And uh, the last thing that I had for the, the weekend there was a, the, a signing session for Jesse. Now let's get to that little story, shall we? I Because uh, Commander Holly was there, I had um, made the decision that I, I really enjoyed the wrestling one shot she did with it me JP, and I decided I wanted to get her to sign the same postcard that I had for Jesse. This same postcard because she was there. I I really did want to actually go up and say so. Thank you for that one shot. It was a great. I really did enjoy it. Holly didn't know much about wrestling to start off with, but the actual role play itself was quite enjoyable. If you're into wrestling and you're into role play, um, yeah, again, hit me up in the description se section and uh, I'll uh, try and find the links for you for that. But it's definitely, it was fun. It was like a grassroots wrestling uh, or like organization slash role play. It was, it was a, gr a great thing to, to watch. And uh, if TB, Total Biscuit, man, if we could get him into a one shot with that, man, that would that would make my day. That would really make my day. Anyway, so I queued up for the signing session. The signing session that uh, Commander Holly had uh, had on her Twitter feed, saying that she was going to be a uh, signing. I decided to start a queue up for that. And again, I found out this signing session was for the cast of Acquisitions Inc. At the role play show that I had no, no idea about. And there was a little bit of confusion whether Jesse would be at this signing session. So once I found out it was for the cast, I was like, oh, fuck. I'm going to be taking out my space butterfly. I really wanted to get him to sign my uh, space butterfly, and there was talk amongst the uh, the enforcers there saying no, no, he's not going. I thought, oh, okay, whatever, um, because Jesse had mentioned that he was doing a signing session at three o'clock, not one o'clock, where the signing session for the uh, the uh, the role play panel was. Fair, fair enough. He didn't want to do two signing sessions. Um, turned out that wasn't the case because they held up the line. Yeah, they held up the queue for the Acquisition Inc. signing, waiting for Jesse to get there, because I don't think Jesse realised there was a little bit of, probably a little bit of miscommunication. 
But uh, it ended up Jesse did come out to for that, and once I realised that, it was like, oh, space bar face coming back out, and um, I had that under my arm waiting. Also, while I was waiting in the uh, in that queue, I filled out the back of one of my uh, fairly old business cards. I am uh, that's another little story in itself. Uh, many years ago, for a, a convention here in Adelaide called Avcon, I made up some. I had some business business cards made up for my for for this uh, YouTube channel, and also had a my Twitch channel also on that business card itself. the uh, The business card itself wasn't really the best design, but it's just something I had on on hand, which I. If someone wa wanted, uh, if uh, if someone was interested in the uh, things that I do on YouTube and Twitch, I could just give them this card here. And they could have the URLs for my channels. So that was just a handy thing to have. So while I was in that line, I thought, right, I'm going to do it. I'm going to give Jesse one of these business cards. And on the back of the business cards, I wrote down my streaming times on the back of this business card it took me every spare business card that i had in that particular holder to get it right uh, basically saying i stream my my my, my, my minecraft and i've tried to uh write down my streaming times in pacific daylight time which i think is actually going to be changing something very soon so that's probably going to get pushed out. But anyway, um, I had this card that I was going to give Jesse because this this was going to be my last chance. And whether anything came of it or not didn't didn't really matter. I had to take this opportunity. So come the come the. Fast forward back to the signing panel. Every, Jesse turns up. I have this card in my hand. I have this postcard here for the rest of the cast to sign. Um, and I had him. I had my space butterfly here for him, for, the, for him to sign. So he was tucked under my arm. And I we get go through the uh, the signing panel. It was Holly that's to start off with. Um, I don't remember his name. The, the the two guys in the middle of the of the signing table, I I don't really remember their names that well. But um, I worked through, and Jesse was on the end. So I first meet. Um, Commander Holly, and just let let her know that I I really enjoyed that what that one shot, and we we talked a little bit about it, and she didn't know much about the wrestling, so uh, I got her to sign. The uh, top of the card, of her character Trash Mama, this one up here. So then moving on to the the next guy, who. I I I straight up admitted to him, so I I don't really know you that well. But uh, I, I do. Uh, like I said I do recollect rec uh, seeing you in uh, a couple of me JT, JP stream, and he confirmed that it was the uh, dogs in the vineyard stream that he had uh, partaken in, and and um, there was another one, Tales from the Loop. Yeah, that's right. That I also did enjoy, and uh, I think I'm pretty sure that's his signature. I'm not entirely sure, and that is just washed out completely. No, too bright. Ah! My my lights are washing it out completely. Oh well. So then moved on to the the uh, the next guy that was there. Again, another another um, celebrity, I suppose, uh, of some role playing standards, and again. I really enjoyed his character within the uh, the Acquisitions Inc. Uh, panel, so I let him know as much, and 
got any signature moved on to uh, Jesse which I then because Jesse had filled out the card already ah that's better yeah Jesse that's yeah, that's Jesse's little message where Jesse himself had already signed that so I wasn't going to give him that to sign again I presented him the butterfly whereas my god the glare the lights oh here we are he I, I asked him to oh no unprofessional totally absolutely unprofessional I got him to sign the wing of my space butterfly and I've I since discovered that uh, Jesse hasn't actually got one of these which I found really surprising that he didn't have this piece of merchandise that he's uh, uh, created over the years and um, he he shared he shared that with the, the the guy he was sitting next to and showed him how the uh, the actual space butterfly itself it's got a zipper on it and you can actually turn it inside out to make it into a, a caterpillar and uh, he said that uh, Jesse has didn't actually get one because they had sold out so quickly and uh, this little guy is rare as hell so thanks to my uh, fast ordering skills the this uh, this and probably is going to be is is one of the uh, the few space butterflies out there in the in the world that is here in Australia and i then took the opportunity to present Jesse my business card and and i i pretty much said straight up it's like look i don't expect anything of this but here here here's my business card maybe you can come by and uh, check out one of the little monsters that you've helped spawn and i've realized as the sun comes up as i'm recording this the light in my room is actually getting brighter and brighter and brighter and that's why i'm slowly getting washed out <laughs> Oh well, if I, if I could actually get this sort of daylight in other type streams, it'd be great. But uh, generally, when I record, the sun is in a different position. Or when I stream, the sun is in a different position, so I don't get this. Oh well, it is what it is. And so, at the end of that signing uh, session, was the last time. I saw the man, the myth, the legend, uh, dare I, I wouldn't say my hero, my idol. That was the last time I saw him, yeah. And I, I honestly hope that I've helped create memories for, for him. And I've pretty much said as much in my fi my final words on the weekend as I'm just going to let 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 the let the footage roll as I get home uh, as I'm at my door and this is the end of my tale of my trip to Pax Australia the meeting of my idol Jesse Cox and all revelations in between if you have a and my advice if you have the chance to do this sort of thing just do it find a way if you can if it is at all possible just do it because this this particular weekend while it's not going to change my regular life it definitely has made memories that I will have for the rest of my life. And life is good. Find those memories, make them. All right. So I'm going to end up here and we'll close out with the video at my front door. All right, folks, I've been Ray. I'll see you next time.
Well, I want to say, finally I'm home. It's been something like 16 hours driving, 8 hours there, 8 hours back again. Hashtag totally fucking worth it. I've met my idols. Even a few few people that I've watched on video slash live streams that uh, I'd never thought uh, were actually going to be at Twitch. Uh, not Twitch. Oh, sorry, I was just listening to a, a, a Twitch um, drop uh, drop frames on the way home. Good thing for driving. Fantastic. Um, but yeah, PAX, PAX Australia. Yeah, I met, met some, many people that I never thought I would. And a few, just a few, just random, talking to random people. Standing in line, standing in queues, striking up conversations. And making memories. Making my mem memories for myself and memories for people that I meet. And I could say this at, at the very least. Hopefully Jesse has a couple memories that I've helped create. And in that... It's life, and life is good.